This is a HeadGum Podcast. I hope that you're the one. If not, you're the prototype. We'll tiptoe to the sun and do things I know you like. I think I'm in love again. I think I'm in love again. Today must be my lucky day. <laughs> Baby, you are the prototype. Do something out of the ordinary, like catch a manatee. Or matinee. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I about I can't that? I don't read. remember that. Like catch a matinee. <laughs> Baby, you are the prototype. I think I'm in love again. I think I'm in love again. That's prototype by Outcast. And here's the thing about that. If there was one rap duo to rap about manatees, I would say <laughs> it could be Outcast. I would do it. Can Greta not read? Is this why Greta is assigning herself summer reading like I was back in high school? Yes. The year's 2005, okay? And to get us hot and horny for going back to 2005, a year I personally really do enjoy being in because I was in high school then. So, you know, it's kind of like serving me as well, mm. my interests as well. So let's see what USA Today has <laughs> to say are the pop culture trends of 2005 as according to Courtney Crowder. Shout out to Courtney Crowder. This article was written in 2015. Okay. <laughs> Number one. YouTube has just been invented. Wow. Guitar Hero hit shelves for the first time. Okay. Yeah. And Mariah Carey came back. I believe that was like a comeback time for her. I think that's when we got MC Squared, Shake if I'm off. not mistaken. Yeah. Tom Cruise iconically jumped on Oprah's couch, which we remember. That was a hard time. This is sad. They say the de quote the Destiny's Child trio wore their last matching outfit. Oh. Meaning Tina Knowles stepped down as making I, their costumes. I think they stopped being like a. They stopped being Destiny's Child. Yeah, like a, a, a fucking cookie cutter group. Mm. And they were like, no, we're individual women who are eventually about to part ways Correct. pretty soon. Yeah. We're going to differentiate ourselves, yeah, one exactly. might say. Um,. This is when Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie romance rumors started flying mm. around. And when Brad Pitt divorced Jen Ann. Very healthy relationship. Nothing went wrong. It's going great now. Okay, this was a big year. This was a big year for <laughs> cheating because Jude Law also cheated on Sienna Miller right. with their kid's nanny. Wow, this is a year of two men cheating on the most iconically hot women of the world. Yeah, cheating on bad bitches. It That's was, insane. It was very in trend in 2005. Um, just to quickly rattle through what we were at culturally with top grossing movies, because I think this says a lot. Number one, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Mm. Number two, Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Didn't wow, this is that. huge for sci-fi <laughs> fantasy. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, number three. That was good. Four, War of the Worlds. Mm. Five, King Kong. Six, Wedding Crashers. Seven, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Eight, Batman Begins. Nine, Madagascar. Ten, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay? It's a good year. That was a good year, and I'm going to end it on this. TV. This is when reality TV, this is what some call the heyday of reality TV, okay? The most popular, the 10 most popular shows were American Idol. Okay. CSI. All right. American Idol again. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate Housewives. Okay. Survivor Palau. Survivor Vanuatu. Mm. CSI Miami. Without a Trace, Grey's Anatomy. And of course, everybody loves Raymond. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now you're wondering, where were we when, you know, we were watching Survivor? Where were we when we were watching Ray Romano on Everybody Loves Raymond? Sure. We were in Oak Park. Oak Park, Illinois. Illinois. And yeah. we are at Langston Kerman. Yeah. Langston, 
you know I wasn't sure if I was supposed to talk you or, can do whatever you and want and I truly blew it if I no, wasn't supposed it's, to I love it when people talk I love it when people don't talk that's Fuck the yeah. beauty of this podcast we have no <laughs> rules we have no rules on the show Langston you know sexiest man in Hollywood that people don't know about oh yet boy. Uh, here you are I mean no everyone knows about you but I'm saying the masses are no I, I knew what you meant from now, and please you know don't I mean? explain further it's all <laughs> you know what I'm deeply saying deeply painful it's deeply painful <laughs> it is it is and you know we're going to be calling the reps after this yeah, you know what gotta, I mean we got to notify people you need to call them and be like I just found out I'm sexiest man alive and how yeah, am I not have we ever cover? considered the possibility yeah. that I might be <laughs> yeah. sexiest man alive I just want to run it by you yeah. <laughs> um, were you sexiest man alive in high school I was not uh, I, I, I I did all right I, I'm not gonna play myself. Mm-mm. I was dating. I was dating like the uh, the captain of the drill team. I was Whoa. like, yeah, I was doing pretty good. But I wasn't like there was this this kid named Evan who was like the star of our basketball team, sure. and he was the sexiest man Alive. across the board. And I was I was coming in with you know like a fifth place, sixth place. I mean, it's energy. hard a name like Evan in the early sure. aughts versus a name like Langston in the early aughts. It's like the name itself. It's hard. There's been a, a cultural shift where yes. we embrace uh, uh, unique qualities about people yes. in a way that was not uh, true of 2005. I think in 2005, I being named Greta. Yeah, I remember being like, I would do anything. I wanted to be named Heather. Jesus, Christ. I was like, I would do anything to be named Heather. Yeah, just to to blend. Yeah, just like Greta. I don't know. It was like. It made me feel like I was like an old grandma. Sure. Is that a, is, was that a family name? Or it was just, they were like, hell yeah, we're going with Greta. My mom wanted to name, this is the lore. Who mm-hmm. knows if it's true. My mom wanted to name me Antonia because that's my mom's middle name. Okay. Then my mom realized my last name's Titleman. And then my mom realized that I would be called Tony Titleman. Oh, no. <laughs> and my mom was like, no. Good for her for having that foresight. <laughs> yeah. She was like, Tony Titleman's not going to no, make it in this world. No, Tony we Titleman's can't. not. Like, Tony Collette, like a cool name like that, mm-hmm. like gorgeous. Tony Titleman, no, no honey. Not, it's not good. You're a middle manager right from the start. Bad. It's, it's, <laughs> no one actually wants to be friends with Tony Titleman. Yeah, no. Um, so then my mom's, one of my mom's best friends was named Greta. Okay. So then I think my mom was like, oh, I like, I love the Greta in my life. And yeah. Then I named my daughter Greta. My, my mom, uh, went with Langston, but her second choice was actually Theo. She Oof. was going to name me Theo because of the, the Cosby show. Oh. So, you know. It worked out for me. I was going to say, I think it, I think when you're younger, you're like, why am I not Theo? And then later on, with yeah, more yeah. information, we're like, thank God I'm not Theo. Listen, I didn't want to be Theo either way. Right. I especially don't want to be Theo in the wake of, of the everything context. else that we know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Where did Langston come from? Is that a family name? No, my mom uh, is a, a writer I was going to say Langston and, Hughes. Yeah, she, she loved Langston Hughes and, yeah. and Harlem Renaissance writers and was yeah. like, I'll do that. And beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful no, it's name. great. It's it's one of those where, and maybe you experience this too, where like I very rarely uh, encounter other ones of me. And so yeah. it's like, it took me years to, to settle into that being cool. Yeah. But now it's cool as fuck where I'm like, I walk into a room, I'm the only Langston 100%. in there. Hell yeah. Well, what's interesting is you're a writer. Yeah. So it's almost like... It's almost like, do you think the name kind of was like, a, were you predisposed to being a writer? Because I, some names I feel like, like I, I love the name Tennessee. Mm. And I think Abe, my husband fucking hates that name. Oh, he's that's like, a cool name. He's like, we have, he's like, we don't, we've never been to Tennessee. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> like, we've never been to Tennessee. We don't, we don't have any connection to Abe. Tennessee. Yeah, I'm like, you can't judge. I'm like, what are you from the Bible? <laughs> I'm like, have you been to the Garden of Eden? Yeah, what are you, uh, um, chop off your, cut your son up. If, yeah, if, if, that's you know, what I'm saying. Isn't that his story? He was going to kill Isaac? Uh, yeah, exactly. He was going to kill the youngest one. Yeah. He did kill Isaac. I no, think. he didn't. He was he didn't. going to because God told him. But then Isaac made him laugh. 
No, no, I don't think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> I don't think Isaac did like bits and he's like, I can't kill no, you. I'm being dead You're too ser- funny. No, that's it. No, I'm being dead it's, serious. It's God, it's God said to him, you need to kill your son. And he took him up to like a desert like or Like a some rock shit. or something. Yeah, a rock. Yeah. And then as he was like going to plunge the knife in him, yeah. God was like, oh, you really were going to do it. That's dope. You're a good follower of mine. You ain't even got to do that no more. God is so <laughs> he's, messy. He's gaslighting, baby. God, he, God he's is, like, you are going to do that? Oh my, He's like that, you know, like God is a man just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Being like, oh, well, like I didn't actually think you were going to do Whoa, it. You're crazy. Like, well, you're, you're crazy, Abraham. crazy. Like I was more being like, ha what if? You, you got to like, chill out, yeah, man. I thought we were all just having fun. It's so, but I thought that Isaac was like he who will bring joy or something oh like he who maybe makes maybe laugh. i mean he might have been the funny one i have no idea but i mean what i just don't he's remember just like doing that one-liners <laughs> you know he's like hold on before you kill it's me like a little mitch hedberg just yeah. like anyway um yeah i do think with with greta's though now i meet babies named mm. Greta because now I think it's becoming popular like that retro spin yeah yeah so now I'll meet like a five year old named Greta and I'll be like you dumb fucking slut <laughs> I'll be like you think you can have my fucking Who do name you think you are yeah exactly yeah. exactly um okay what was your high school like what what, what? I can't call babies sluts Just, you, can. Just you don't want me doing this while I call five-year-olds <laughs> whores. Some five-year-olds are whores. And that's okay. We call it the way we see it. I'll stop smacking the chair. Um, I'm just excited. Um, what was going on with you in high school? What was your high school like? Was well, you it big? Was a, it small? What it was, was a the very vibes? big high school. Okay. Was, I think. All Illinois high schools, from what I'm gathering, yeah. were monstrous. Yeah, I don't, I've I've rarely encounter somebody who went to a high school as large as mine. I think How we big? were 3,500 kids. A grade? No, in total. In the school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So like I, my graduating class was like in the range of like 800 to 1,000 or some shit. That's like the size of like Vassar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were a crazy. lot of colleges where I was like, "Well, I can't, I can't do that. That's, That's smaller so than crazy. what I'm already doing." Yeah. Wow. So were there like when you're you are in a school that big? Are there like cliques, or is it just so big that there can't those like weird microcosms can't even exist? I think the microcosms exist, but I think there's so much. Uh, uh, cross pollination because right. there has to be like you have to be able to like communicate right you know what i mean we're, right we're shuttling information more than we are like fucking just whispering it in each other's ears so i there was there were clicks but i don't think we had like we didn't have like bully clicks if that makes sense it wasn't that thing where you're like oh no i'm part of the dweebs that get their lunch right knocked out of their hands type you don't have shit. like some guy named like butch smacking like no. your books out of your hands <laughs> i gotta like run for my life yeah. every day no we we didn't have that vibe it was just more of like you you found your little uh community inside yeah. of this much larger space what was your community i uh i had a weird high school trajectory in that I started on the basketball team Mm. and played basketball for roughly the first three years and then got cut from the team and ended up joining the spoken word club Mm. and became like the star spoken word uh, performer person in in school. So I went from being like a a jock of sorts to a dweeb in in a small matter of time and somehow managed to keep both communities uh, together. Yeah. Like they liked me still. And that, that, so it made my high school a little easier than I thought it would be. Did you like basketball? I loved it. I still love it now. Yeah. And did you love spoken word? I loved, yeah, I love it very much. And with spoken word, Poetry. Yeah. Much like the beautiful poem you read. Uh, about manatees. About manatees <laughs> moments ago. And you and would in when you would do spoken word, was it original poetry? Or? Yeah. Wow. So we in Chicago, we have this program that's the largest uh, youth poetry slam in the country uh, called Louder Than a Bomb. It might be in the world, but it's it's called Louder Than a Bomb. And it's essentially like a a 
citywide competition for mm. poetry where you send a team represent from your school representing the school to compete in this this uh slam i've been to a slam poetry competition hell yeah as an audience member sure did you like it were you enjoying yourself you know <laughs> no you weren't no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you hated it i have to say like you know when people find out that we do stand-up comedy for sure, example and yeah. people are like wow that's so brave i could never imagine mm -hmm. like going on stage and doing that like i had that feeling watching slam poetry because i think it's like it's it's mocked a lot you it's know it's mocked constantly so i think like the <laughs> thought of people and i think what's interesting specifically or what i noticed in like slam competitions is it's heavy yeah. It's heavy. Oh, you don't show up if you ain't got daddy issues. No, 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 no. It is <laughs> you keep dealing... it at home if you you want to talk about peace. And no, prosperity. you're talking about like you're either talking about like a deep trauma emotionally, mm, yeah. physically. You're talking about race. Yeah. You're talking about gender. Uh huh. You're talking about oppression violence violence it's so loaded yeah. that i remember just like there was a team from hawaii that was at this competition oh, that i was at stunk. they were so <laughs> good and it was just so fucking heavy where i was like i guess that's fair hawaiians have, are constantly being oppressed by just our our vacation yeah alone. yeah so they probably have a lot to unpack i think i was looking at it more of like what you you drink coconut yeah milk yeah and, yeah and eat uh whatever y'all eat, eat like beautiful rice with pineapple meat. and spam <laughs> and all of that stuff no it was like i just remember being like so taken aback yeah. being like whoa like this is intense i don't even know all these words like yeah, i just remember yeah. feeling stupid sure so you did you always write poetry throughout high school? I did. I think I I did it uh, mostly in the beginning to impress girls. I'd be like, I was like making. I my dad was one of the first people in the neighborhood with like a CD burner. Love that. Uh, and so like I would make girls mixtapes and like write poems and shit, and and none of it worked. It wasn't like you, you don't you don't get pussy that way. But in a, in a young boy's mind, you think you. Do. I would be like, oh my god, every boy that I hooked up with was disgusting. Sure, but you say that in retrospect with an adult perspective. Brain, yeah. As a kid, you're like. Why is he so obsessed with me? And I know you, you go and fuck that disgusting man. That yeah, I mean, I do remember a boy burning me a bright eyes CD and me thinking to myself, he's absolutely going to kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not like not like oh, he's emotional. I was like, oh no, he's obsessed yeah, and he's yeah, going yeah. to kill me in my sleep. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with this person. That's, and that was more my energy all the way through right, high right, school. Right. It was like I got a lot of CDs and a lot of poems about you, baby girl. Did you have a girlfriend in high school? I did. I had well, I had two. Two main girlfriends, uh, freshman, sophomore year, I had, uh, it was one of the cheerleading girls. Mm. And then, uh, a classic basketball player, cheerleader yeah. combo. And then it turned into a, a classic spoken word uh, kid. Uh, heartbreak. <laughs> no, well, yeah, that, it, it ended in heartbreak. Oh, you're saying then the next one was a spoken word kid in a theater girl? I was girl? a spoken word kid and she was uh, uh, not, what is, it's a uh, drill team. She mm -hmm, did the drill yes. team shit. So. Not I as cool that. as Just cheerleading. Artists. Yeah. <laughs> artists coming together, you know, thespians, yeah. people working in the arts. Sure. They wore tights. The cheerleaders didn't. That was the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. Did you experience first love in high school? I think so. I think yeah. I've always been like a big feeler. Yeah. Well, and, clearly you're writing poetry. Yeah. Or I at least was pretending to be a big feeler. And maybe I was just uh, feigning feelings for the sake of uh, feeling like that's that what was you should my be purpose. Feeling? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I want to be a man in love. I want to. I want to be like that man in Love Jones. So I yeah. write poems and, and make girls fall in love with me. But I think I was a big feeler. So there were definitely girls that like, I was like, oh, I'm in love with you. Mm -hmm. We're going to be together forever mm -hmm. type shit. Uh, high school love. We love to talk about it on this sure. pod. Sure. And, and boy, am I proud of each and every girl that I picked. I every mean, single it one. hits. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> high school love is so hard. Yeah. 
you feel so helpless and lost and I've long argued uh, and you know people will sometimes argue differently I think that high school love is as legitimate as any other love that we experience oh yeah throughout our lives like I think that we often belittle it because our brains aren't finished whatever whatever but it's like no I felt all the things that I probably feel for my wife when I sure. was in high school, I just didn't know that those were dumb feelings to have for a person that d was incorrect. Right. In many ways, I would argue that the love we felt, if you were lucky, lucky enough, unlucky, I was, you know, I, on the podcast I recorded before this, yeah. it was the conversation of like, you know, some people don't fall in love in high school were and that's a, okay you weren't a lover oh school. my god are you kidding me i was like love sick in high school uh, but i i argue that in many ways it's the purest love it's mm. like doing like pure what i would imagine would be like pure like heroin yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's no, it like cut with nothing nothing it's just so <laughs> fucking potent and powerful yeah. and like and like that high is like the biggest high you'll ever feel right? i can see that because i do think like even now i'm so aware of the of my my partner's humanity yeah that like i recognize fault and i accept the fault sure. and i embrace the fault and i take no issue with the fault but i see the fault all the time Right. Whereas like in high school, I was like, no, nah, you're pretty much perfect. Yeah. And uh, all I got to do is fix me. And, and then you and me right. will be together forever. forever. And it's like, who boy, that ain't right. Also in high school, your life is so different. Like, mm -hmm. y you know, most of us are living at our parents' house. Yeah. We aren't paying our rent. We aren't worried about a mortgage. No. We are not worried about, you know, going to work every day and like the things that get bigger and bigger in our lives, the older we get. So the love that we feel, it can be so focused on yeah. just like, I love you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have school, but that's whatever. whatever. And other than that, like, I love you. Yeah, I used to get in my, my uh, black Ford Focus and I would just like ride by my girlfriend's house like go out of my way to ride by her house just in case she was coming outside and I could be like, oh, hey, hey, yeah. I'm bumping into yeah, you. How weird is it that I'm driving by yeah, her house right like, now? I don't know, big dog. That's pretty weird. I and, know, and not in cool, hindsight. But <laughs> you but needed that. You needed to work through whatever that true. was. But no, now like when we get older, it's like, you know, I love Abe so much with all of me, but I also love how like his life can fit with my life. Yeah. Whereas like high school love, it's not about that. It's no. not like, like, oh, we share very similar goals. We have interests, <laughs> but our interests are also different <laughs> enough. And you like to spend time with your, it's not like, it's, yeah. now it's like when you get older, you have this like strange map of like, this person that can yeah, somehow fit into your world or something. It's, it's not partnership. No. It truly is just like wanting to press your world into another world yeah. and make them fit somehow. And yeah. then it, as an adult, you go, hey, I need somebody to fill in the blanks on whatever the fuck this is. Yeah. And I don't care if that means that like we're going to argue about the same six things right. for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Because I am disorganized and yes. you are not. And yes. that helps. Yes, Abe did tell me last night that I needed an assistant because I just don't know anything. And I said, do you want to pay for it? Because <laughs> I'm looking, if anybody wants to be my assistant and we can talk it, talk Abe into paying for an assistant. Abe, Abe has the money. I would love an assistant. Yeah. But they would just end up like going to like fucking go get him tiger for me and stuff like that. It'd I, be so boring. I think I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. I know I'm going to need one eventually. Like I, yeah. I think that's part of whatever the evolution you're of You're edging. Job is. You know, you're edging on needing an assistant. Sure. I, <laughs> <laughs> I get an assistant and I hold it. And yeah. And I hold it and I hold <laughs> it and I, I hold it. I don't use it. I just get real close. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I'd be embarrassed knowing that I did so many of these things on my own. Yeah. And then now I'm asking another adult yeah. to do it for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Where it's like, it's like hey, look can up you do flights. This thing? Yeah. And it's like, I know how to look up flights. Yeah. 
I have that yeah. ca- ca- capability. It's like, hey, can you do this thing that I've been doing for myself for the past 36 years? Yeah. Do you think you can come in here and like actually do this for me? That'd be so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Call my doctor. Yeah. It's like, you know his number, man. Yeah. You could just call your doctor. Can you call my doctor and figure out what's wrong with me and then don't tell me when you know the yeah, answers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a good student? Uh, I was a pretty good student. I wasn't like a like a superstar, but I was in all honors classes. I like, That's a superstar. Yeah, but I wasn't like uh, showing up everybody in honors classes. Right, right, I right. Was like, I was doing like A's, B's, honors classes kind of vibe. But yeah, I liked school. I, I thought I was pretty good at it at the time. Did you have siblings? Do I'm you the, have siblings? I, I'm the oldest of five. But, oh my God. Yeah, there's a lot of us, but I, none of us have the same set of parents, if that makes sense. So, yes. Like, I'm substantially older than all of my siblings. So, you are the only child of your parents? Of my parents. And my mom, uh, my dad had already gotten remarried, but my mom got remarried, had two kids. Those are my younger younger sisters. They're 10 and 11 years younger than I am. Okay. That's the next in line. Then my brother is the adopted child of my father and his third wife, who is 12 years younger than I am. And Wait, the, hold on. Yeah. The, the adopted child is 12 years younger than you. That's right. Okay, for a second, I thought that you were saying your dad's third wife is 12 years younger no, than no, no, you. No, no, and no. I was going to be like, well, Listen. that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> he married three times, but he's not a monster. Yeah. He's okay. Uh, <laughs> My dad married four times, so you My know what? My mom's on her fourth. Tomato, so, tomato. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then my mom uh, had a th- uh, fourth child uh, who is 23 years younger than I am. So she is, she's a, a child. She's 12. You know what oh I mean? Oh my God. Yeah, she's, she's a real like kid still. So you never, you never had, obviously you never went to high school with any of them. No, we never went to high school. None of us really look alike. It's, it's sort of a weird, like, uh, it feels like a, a bad sitcom. You know what I mean? <laughs> like like a the, Melrose everyone place just looks so different. No one yeah. knows they're related to each other. It's yeah. just like that's so crazy. Yeah. So I guess Stevie and Sydney, my my two younger siblings, they they would have gone to school together and did at certain points go to school together. But I think in general we weren't. Uh, yeah, it's a different vibe. Right? How old were your parents when they had you? Uh. 30 something and 20. So they had an age gap. Got it. My mom was 20 when she had me. Wow, young. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I thought that's what I wanted. To be like a young parent, yeah, because my mom was like fun, you know what I mean, and like yeah, I mean your mom, like when you were when you were sixteen years old, your mom was was your age. Yeah, she like my mom. I used to have to go to like college classes with her. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know crazy. What I mean? I'd be sitting yeah, yeah, in the yeah. back like playing Game Boy yeah. while she's like learning about her future. Yeah, so like, I was like that. That'd be tight. I yeah. get to bring this cool kid with me everywhere I, know. I go. And now in retrospect, I'm like that was that was a nightmare. And Imagine I see why she needing acts to this bring way. your child child with you everywhere if if my baby had to come here i'd be like this is the worst podcast i've ever been a part of it's so crazy it's truly unbearable babies just don't shut the fuck up no they don't shut the fuck up and they they're real uncool about it when you tell them to (laughs) you know what i mean it's not even like you're like oh my bad they're like why it's like yo i had a friend the other day say to me something that i hadn't heard anyone ever say yeah he genuinely was just like, you know what I don't like about toddlers? Uh oh. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what? Let me preface this by saying I love kids. Yeah. Okay. I really do Same. love kids. I'm, I'm a They're big so fan. like to me fascinating. Yeah. But my friend was like, They're so stupid. Mm. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they don't fucking know anything. Yeah. They ask dumb questions. <laughs> they're uninteresting. And they're just stupid. And I'm like, well, 
Yeah, but it's so crazy because I never think of them as being stupid. I just think of them as being like where they're supposed to be, little brains that are like figuring everything out. But it really gave me a chuckle to just like know that there are people on Earth that look at toddlers. Look at this dummy. (laughs) Yeah, like (laughs) like you can't even tie your shoes, dummy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like you don't know who the president is, you dumb ass. (laughs) I'm just like people are so silly. Yeah, I I think that I love children. I especially love my own child. But I do think so much of it just ends up being I think hanging out with the kid is is closer to like uh, just helping someone through a mushroom trip. Yeah. And sometimes it's like a good trip and sometimes it's a bad trip. Yeah. But it's a mushroom trip yeah. all the time. Love so they're that. asking you about colors right. and like <laughs> in faces and weird things that you're like, I don't know, bro. Why do you want to talk about that? Yeah. But that's the piece is being like, you're fine, buddy. Yeah. Let's, let's make it through whatever this experience is. And yeah. Then, and then we'll get a big meal. And you're like, yeah, hell yeah. I was hanging out with my four year old niece the other day and she just out of nowhere took off her pants and looked at her vagina. Sure. You can say it. And I said, <laughs> I said, hey, what are you doing? And she looks at me dead serious. And she goes, just checking my vagina for hair. <laughs> Whoa. And I was like, oh. Fuck. I was like, okay. Yeah. And she was like, I don't have any. And I was like, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dope update. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> good to know. Maybe don't update me. <laughs> yeah. Surprising. Yeah. But, I'm, but then it isn't that immediate pivot of being like, do you want macaroni and cheese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so what's next? Yeah, I'm like, can I give you food? <laughs> yeah, um, can we maybe put some pants on and <laughs> focus our attention elsewhere? Um, were you a partier in high school? I was not. I think I uh, I was a, uh, I used to do a joke about it, but I was a kid that actually believed all the dare program shit. Wow! Like I was terrified of like uh, overdosing, and I remember watching old twenty twenty episodes mm. where they talk about like ecstasy yes. poking holes in your brain. And do you remember that commercial with Natalie Portman mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm. egg and yeah. the pan? Like this is your brain, then put yeah. the egg down, smash. This them. is your brain yeah. on drugs. Yeah, I remember all the, the the dare shit and yeah. i believed it so i was like i was pretty sober in high school i got drunk one time uh my senior year i want to say yeah off of like mike's hard lemonades and was like throwing up profusely and Absolutely. was like i ain't gotta do this no more That's this is very this good feels wrong i will say the ecstasy propaganda also did work for it worked for a while on me and then it really didn't work for oh me. you were like well then i was like I was like, oh, that's scary. Like, I remember the visual of like ecstasy takes um, ice cream scoops out of your yeah, brain. They were and like, very visceral images. Intense. But you know what really fucked me up in high school? Or maybe this was more middle school. Did you ever have to do those like real simulation of a fire happening in your house? Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. It wasn't I, in our house, but we did it at school. Yeah. It was like, it was at like, they would like, set up like a weird like trailer yeah in, like, it was the almost parking like lot. uh in retrospect it was like a set yes where like yeah it would be in a trailer yeah and it'd be like a bunch of fake doors yes that they could make hot, hot. yes and like and sh- light up and shit yes. to show that like oh that doors you you can't go through that way yes. and they'd have like fake smoke and shit yeah it was intense i the that scared me yeah and that has still left me deeply afraid of a house fire of but how course. good would that be on like mushrooms i mean <laughs> <laughs> you're just going through there and you're like this is hot i do like it yeah. i mean it's kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, no, i don't think they do that anymore <laughs> i don't think they should I, don't. <laughs> I also i also think they're real worried about like school shooters now they're like you guys if you burn up that's the best news I we tr- could have i mean honestly it's like the yeah. house fire is like the least of our concerns we, we don't days. have time to worry about that. Oh, my God. Did yeah. you what did you wear in high school? What was your style? Oh, no, uh, I 
I dressed uh, almost exclusively uh, for the first half in like platinum FUBU. Love which, that. Which, again, another Cosby related thing. It was the FUBU that uh, that was like Fat Albert uh, branded. <laughs> so it was like all Fat Albert style FUBU clothing. I feel like that's actually probably like collectible now. It, it probably is like back in style or yeah. could have been back in style if Buddy was a little chiller. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, but but it was like very expensive and hot at a point. Mm -hmm. And then it, it dwindled into like something you could find at like Marshall's and value city. And that's when your boy bought uh, big in the stocks. You yes, know what I mean? yes. Yes. That's yes. That's when I invested hard. You in say platinum I'm going to be buying all of this FUBU collabo. Yeah, I went, I went platinum FUBU for my first half. And then I, I shifted into uh, echo. Do you remember mm, echo? echo unlimited? Yes, yeah, I do with I the rhino. It. How could I forget? I a lot of echo and like the and like the quote like not like the quote but the like pill shape yeah with like the doop doop yeah, it was and the like rhino. A rhino in the middle yeah. of like that weird yeah, yeah it was like a pseudo pill skateboard yes. kind of vibe yeah. patty harrison has a story about her favorite outfit in high school was yeah. an echo tracksuit hell yeah yeah i love that for her yeah <laughs> it was it was like her most prized possession yeah I, I wore echo all the time so much so that when i went off to college because i do think chicago in general is a pretty tacky place like and you know <laughs> some of your listeners viewers might be upset about this but we dress like shit in chicago and so i thought i was like fly because i had like the newest whatever of of Echo, yes. and then went to college around a bunch of people who were like, "Hey, bro, what's that?" And I had to be like, "Oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't like it either. I, don't, I think it's stupid." Wait, I thought Echo was cool. Not by the time I was still wearing it. No. I guess I think by a certain point you had to have like jumped off the graduated. Echo train. Yeah. Do you remember an outfit where you thought to yourself, "I look so hot"? Fuck. It was just a lot of oversized tees. I do remember. There was a very brief period if uh, we're shifting back to Platinum Fubu. Yeah. But there was a very brief period where Platinum Fubu then made a collaboration with Muhammad Ali. And so it stopped being about uh, Fat Albert and started being about Muhammad Ali. What a jump. Ali. They, <laughs> listen, they lost focus. I was going to say, what a jump. <laughs> Damon were... John, what's going on? <laughs> I think Damon was on his way out. Yeah. He's like, I don't give a shit. Put Muhammad Ali on the pants. But I bought a pair of Muhammad Ali uh, platinum fubu pants that were like the shiny uh jean shiny mm. denim do you know what i mean oh i had a pair of shiny denim jeans yeah they were like that thick shiny thick. denim and by the way you are sweating oh, in yeah. those pants yeah, yeah that yeah. is a hot pant it's a thick it is a durable yes <laughs> that is a workman's jean. i was gonna say work, <laughs> construction workers need to be in shiny denim yeah if you need to to meld something yes you put on that shiny denim it's utilitarian and i so I had those thick, shiny denim pants, and then I, I, they had a like a a patch that hung over, but it wasn't like a patch on the pocket. Mm. It was literally like a flap that hung over the pocket that was like this rainbow uh, uh, mural almost of Muhammad Ali, and those oh were like God. truly my prized possession. Where I was like, y'all can't fuck with. Uh, that's art yeah that's like you are where you that's wearable art yeah, yeah yeah and i wish you still had them i do too honestly like what what did you do with them do you think at a point you were just like fuck these and just like gave them away i think i i, I think at some point you become so sober to how embarrassing this choice is yeah that you will do anything to like bag these and throw them into a fucking river yeah delete and, delete and, delete yeah. in retrospect i wish i had like the foresight to be like you're going to want to look at this one day. Even if you don't put them on, you're going to want to see what you did. Yeah. You know what I mean? I definitely went through a phase of only shopping at Salvation Army. Mm. And I remember my mom just being like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We being have. like... You are so blessed and you are so lucky. Like, why? We have enough to yeah, do Yeah, like, why things. are you doing this? And I remember there was this shirt that I found. And this is when I was going through, I went through phases in high mm -hmm. school, but this is when I was going through like an indie, like, I was never really twee, but like kind of twee adjacent mm -hmm. phase. 
And the shirt just said, had like a little patch of a quilt, okay? And it said, blessed are the quilters for they are the peacemakers. Whoa. Okay, do you understand like how how fuck? embarrassing is that whoa and i love this shirt and i remember i washed it and somehow it got like bleach damaged and i remember being like my my world my is world over. is yeah. broken <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you, uh, out of every i was like out of every shirt i own it i was had trying to be, to be a 65 year old named barbara yeah and now and now, and now, and now I'm, I'm nothing yeah now i'm, li- I'm nothing how are <laughs> what we gonna is know my have? identity my signature periwinkle periwinkle quilting pun shirt <laughs> <laughs> it got ruined no yeah yeah, yeah. It is funny how like those items mean so much to you and they truly are just junk. It's the worst, just, it, worst thing. It, it was at the Salvation Army because a lady who it was appropriate for yes. was like, this is ridiculous. Yes. I'm done. Yes. And then you were like my most cherished yes. item. Yes. Yes. Crazy. What was your shoe? What was your shoe of choice? Oof, again, tacky home, tacky place. I used to wear, my dad would refuse to spend a lot of money on like sneakers. Mm-hmm. And so I figured out like shoes that he would mm. spend at least some amount of money on. Yeah. And so I was either wearing, for basketball, I loved wearing Tracy McGrady shoes, mm. which were Adidas at the time. And I love those. But then for like walking around, I was wearing like black K Swiss. Love that. I, I was fucking. I was an all black K Swiss. Oh yeah. I don't need no. T- wow. Don't give me no colors. Give wow. me the raw, plain old K Swiss with like the K Swiss on the tongue. Uh, like didn't they have like yeah, that? Yeah, they like, had that like almost Salvation yeah. Army looking emblem. Yes. Uh, and just those stripes down the side, and I was like, "This is it." Keep you know, me that's a, clean a sexy pair of shoe. Case Writing poetry. Sure. Doing slam. <laughs> Do you remember any of your poems? Absolutely not. And I, even if I could, I would never share them here. No, you would have. I've got to hold on to something for myself. Did you want to be a poet? I did, yeah. So I, I actually went to I, – I continued to do slam poetry in college and then went and got a master's in poetry. You after. did? Yeah, I have an MFA in poetry. Oh, my God. God. Oh, yeah. It's a bad choice. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should write a book. No. Some oh people drink. God. Some people uh, stab. I do poetry. <laughs> no. You need to write a You need to publish a book of poems. That was my plan for a long time. But I, what you find out is like to publish is an insane amount of work and commitment to not just like writing, but the world, much in the way that comedy is. Right. right? That like. You can have a funny joke, but you got to be committed to like being a part of the industry. Right. That's what poetry is. So you are essentially being a part of like uh, because trying to work towards being a professor at a, a college. You right. are doing a lot of things that I I don't feel equipped nor interested in doing. So I had an R. English R. teacher in high school. His name was Hayes Davis. Shout out to Hayes Davis. Hayes Davis. I like that name. He was very smart and he was a poet. And yeah. I remember being like thinking to myself like, wow, like to be a poet. Yeah. Because there's something so to me, it's like being a playwright. It's mm-hmm. like it goes back to what feels like the dawn of the artistry of writing, sure. you know, and yeah. I think about people that are pursuing it feels so noble to me somehow because (laughs) i'm just so because i'm like there's nothing commercial about poetry no it's it truly was of and i comedy is not a a lucrative uh, job either. It's not? I, who, I hope, <laughs> oh, I hope we're both poor. Oh, you're saying comedy doesn't <laughs> make you money? <laughs> who knew that? <laughs> but poetry is truly like laughable money compared to what comedy is. Yeah. Which doesn't compute or even make sense. Like you said, it seems like much more of like a noble, almost essential yeah. thing for society, but truly... It, you're working for free for most of your life. That's so crazy. Yeah. 
Oh my God. I my professors when I was like getting an MFA were both former poet laureates and they had to be professors. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't just live off of like your dope ass right. They were the laureates of the country. Right. This, this isn't just like local city shit. This was I um I performed at the Kennedy Center a few weekends ago and the host Ooh. of the show uh brought me up on stage as a poet laureate. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, mm, you know what? People people don't, might leave actually thinking I am. Don't correct it. Yeah, See I go on stage. Goes. I'll talk about <laughs> coming in my pants and I'm a poet laureate. Um, oh, my God. Knock, knock, knock. Is that a door knock I hear? Oh. Why, yes, it is. Welcome to the high school guidance counselor's oh, office. Yeah, I'm yeah. your high school guidance counselor. So nice to see you. Um, <laughs> so nice to be seen. <laughs> Langston, in this chunk of the show... Mm-hmm. You get to rectify a wrongdoing of your high school past. Mm. You get to say, fuck you to someone. You get to apologize to someone. You can do both. Yeah. And whatever kind of high school agita is like clawing at your door. Sure. This is your chance to release it. I love this. I I I want to uh, both rectify and say fuck you if okay. that's possible. Yes. I... I uh, my senior year, I was in a gym class with a bunch of, of my friends at the time, and we were a, a rambunctious group. We would play pranks on each other constantly. Mm. And pranks for us uh, mostly consisted of like picking a person that day and like beating the shit out of them. That's good. It was like us just like stomping each other yes. until like the they laid in a mass of their own mess. Uh, and, and we would do this constantly. It was very funny, silly to us. Us. And then one day we did it to a, a young man who would often participate. Mm. Uh, but but this day we we had a field day. Mm. We threw him in a trash can. We dumped the books from his backpack on top of the trash can he was in. Classic. And when I say trash can, it's not like a dumpster that fits a human. We folded him in half. Like in the middle, and he like went into the dumpster, and then we wedged dumped, himself. Yeah, and then we dumped books on top of him, and then my friend Fabian did a wrestling move off of like a a bench onto the trash can and knocked it over, and his mm. little body rolled out. Love that. And then he told on us, mm. uh, and we uh, all got suspended uh, a few days. I think I did in school suspension for like three days uh for those crimes and and i want to apologize because we did take it too far mm. but i also want to say fuck you for being a snitch yes and telling on us because we were all having fun you knew what the game was mm-hmm. yeah well here's the thing <laughs> <laughs> you think i can still get into college with that <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well i, I want to say two things number one in school suspension now that's punishment. That's I the remember worst version of it. It's the worst because I remember kids used to get suspended at my high school. Yeah, and I would be like, "I want to get suspended." It's like the what? I, oh, I just get uh, I'm out of school for three days and I just have to stay home. Like, yeah. please, for the love of God, someone suspend me. And once you find out that there's no permanent record for real, that are like all yeah. of this is made up. Yeah, it's so suspend stupid. Me. Yeah, but. In school suspension, Oof. that's hell. It's the literally the worst thing that they can do to a person. <laughs> because it's like you're sitting there in this hell and you'd almost rather go to your classes because at least you can like engage your brain or see your friends. But no, it's almost like more sinister. Yeah. And they put you at least in my school in school suspension was run by a security guard. Mm -hmm. And that security guard had no ability to help you with any of the homework that they were constantly laying you on, Mm -hmm. you know, laying on you while you're in there. So it's just like a lady at the front scowling at you every time you even move because Mm -hmm. she doesn't want you to have fun Mm -hmm. while your friends like walk past and bang on the window mm-hmm. and laugh at you yeah. for being trapped in this room all day. It's it's the worst. Now, when you would say you would, um, you know, kind of prank, you and your friends would prank each other until they were, quote, lying in a pool <laughs> of their own mess. 
I just want to circle back to that <laughs> sure, really quickly. Sure, sure. Just curious what kind of a mess we're talking about. Uh, it was like slobber and uh, slobber. Yeah, okay, not shitting I was gonna say, was it shit? No, Is no, it no. piss? We, we weren't bleeding and okay. And it was hurt for real. It we was slobber, bruised and and uh, sweat. battered. Yeah, sweat, sweat, slobber. Yeah. You were getting jumped. Got by it. A lot of guys. Got it. Who all thought it was funny. Uh, but didn't want you to like have any permanent damage. Got it. Yeah. And you said your friend's name was Fabian. Fabian is the one that did the drop kick off the bench. Yeah. Well, what an what an amazing what an amazing like tale that the guy that you wedged into the trash can yep. then had to go to the administrator's office. Yeah, sounding sounding like fucking Shakespeare, <laughs> being like Langston and Fabian wedged me. Like like it's so dramatic. Yeah, no, he really the he names really told are the whole so story. dramatic. Yeah. Fabian's oh a, a writer now. He writes uh he writes books, uh mostly fantasy about like mermaids and Well, we and shit. will be bleeping his name. Okay, that's fine. Because we're gonna protect his uh, no, do we need to bleep Fabian's name? Let's just say it a million times. Fabian, Fabian, Fabian. <laughs> Fabian, Fabian, Fabian. He's a good man. He's a father <laughs> now. He does good work. Let's talk about homework really quickly. Okay. Useless. A hundred percent. Okay. I some... was a teacher and I know that that's uh, true. Yeah, it's it's a waste. That's, wait, what grades did you teach? I taught ninth, 11th, and 12th grade English. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, you taught... have like every point of view. Yeah, I taught kids. I taught like the youth. For how long? Uh, Full time for about three years. And then various forms of like after school programming and like I did fucking like SAT prep and Kaplan. All Were that you a stuff. good SAT taker? Uh, I didn't take the SATs. I took the ACTs. Me too. I'm a Midwest I needed kid. that science section. Yeah, I liked I liked the ACTs. And I did pretty good on the ACTs. I didn't, but you know what? I did them. Okay. <laughs> I, I famously fell asleep yeah. uh, trying to take the SATs. My mom thought I was narcoleptic. Wow. And then she- Turns out you were just uh, not interested. I was interested. stoned <laughs> and tired. And then I took the ACTs, and I've said this a million times on this podcast, but- when my mom dropped me off to take the ACTs. She just gave me like a, a like a brown paper bag, mm. and all that was in it were two Red Bulls and two hard boiled eggs. Oh no! Oh, your mom sabotaged you. <laughs> so I was like the girl, like flying on Red Bull and like flying eating like stinky yeah. eggs. It was so bad. I think I got like a twenty six uh, or a twenty seven on my ACT. That's pretty good. Mm, is that bad? Well, I, then I've I been think, telling everybody I've been doing good. I think it's out of 36. Yeah, but that's, that's you know. That's fine. Like it got me not, into a pretty good school. It got know. me into University of Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, homework is useless. Wait, and then wait, I I need to I know that we need to be wrapping it up because I know that I love to talk. No, no, no. Um what's the worst age as a high school teacher? Mm. Like what is the worst age? year do you uh, think sophomore year i agree sophomore year is the worst year freshman year they there's still a sweetness there mm. they're like still kids mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to navigate this space but they kind of lean on you yeah in a really sweet way where they're like i truly don't know and if you could help me big dog that'd be awesome yeah and then they turn into sophomores and they're real grumpy and real defiant because they want to be upperclassmen but can't figure yeah. that out yet. It's yeah, it's the worst. Did you have students that were in love with you? Uh, I at one point, uh, and this this always gets a disturbing reaction, and I swear to God, I had nothing to do with it. But I at one point had uh, uh, three girls accuse me of having uh, like a sordid affair. Uh, by the water fountain with with a girl where they claimed I was like making out with a child at the water fountain what? and told an administrator that. And then I had to have like a full sit down with my principal to explain like I don't n know what the fuck this is. And then eventually the girls were like, oh, yeah, we just we made it up because we we thought it was funny. And yeah, you know, it's, it always gets this reaction, and I gotta stop telling people this. And then were you, and then were you just like, <laughs> I quit like I, that? I had to just keep teaching those girls and pretend like y'all didn't try to murder me. No, you like you didn't try to 
actually sent me to jail. Yeah, like this wasn't, you know what I mean? Like this this isn't a laughable thing for me. Teens kind of are crazy. They're insane. As a as a once teenage girl, yeah. teenage girls are fucking nuts. Yeah, and I I tried I tried not to to find myself making as many gendered arguments yeah. as a teacher, but I truly hated teaching little girls. It was it was a nightmare. Here I think teenage girls not. need to masturbate is the thing. Okay. And I think that 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 there's so much shame around being a woman and yeah. our bodies develop so much more overtly and aggressively than a male body does. Yeah. Like all of a sudden we're so sexualized like out of nowhere sure. or or you don't develop tits and then you feel more shame or whatever it is right. you're dealing with. And, I, and then I think we also have our periods. We have so much going on with our bodies yeah. and we have so much stress and I think that we normalize through pop culture and conversation boys jerking off and boys masturbating and all of this stuff and like whatever which I think is a big release and also like can help people build confidence in their own way yeah, or like get in touch with who they bit. are yeah. or I think for girls like our bodies are I mean, we're not educated about them. We're not taught about them like nothing. We're kind of sure. just given this fucking body and we need to deal with whatever is going on. Yeah. And I think that that can cause like people to go kooky in their yeah. brain. Because... I don't even know that that I felt like and I 100 percent believe everything you're saying, but I, I don't even know that I felt like the girls were crazy as much as it felt like, oh, this isn't. The way that that I at least know how to communicate right. is not being met, met in a healthy way with a lot of the young women. Yeah. Whereas like with the young men, you yell at them and they yell back. And then the next day y'all high five and you're back to business. No, and if you yelled girls, at me when I was a girl in your class, I'd be like, <laughs> this is war. <laughs> yeah. And then you would tell all your friends yeah. that we don't like him anymore. And then it's all And now on. they're being mean to me in other classes that I'm teaching. And I didn't even do nothing to them. And yeah. boys just don't do that. Like. They're obnoxious and they're awful in a lot of other ways, but they don't make teaching harder through like proxy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's just if you have a problem with them, it's with them and that's it. Interesting. Yeah. This is why we need to abolish gender. <laughs> I think that's true. I I do. Yeah. Um oh my god, if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? Uh uh, I think I think I I should have uh, taken myself far less seriously than mm. I did, and if I would have uh, known that I was funny then, right, or at least as funny as I could have been, yeah, I'd have had a much better time. <laughs> Just be a silly Billy man. <laughs> Don't come on. This poetry stuff uh, yeah, is weird. Cut it. <laughs> um, Tevi, I forgot to ask for our classmates' corner. Sure. Um, this is also about Mean Girls. So great. Oh hell yeah. Uh, so Marley says, hi, Greta. I have a huge fuck you to give to three girls that were seniors when I was a freshman. The year oh, was no. 2005. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had a party at my house when I was a freshman and I had the ultimate party house with a pretty epic basement. And at the time I was a pretty innocent freshman. So we weren't really drinking at parties yet. Some kids and I were outside playing basketball in my driveway when three senior girls showed up. They were obviously drunk, and I told them that they couldn't be at my party. Also, how embarrassing for three senior girls to want to be at a freshman party. Anyways, they were super pissed but left. The next Monday at school, I was walking down the stairs to Spanish class when I felt a bunch of what I thought was water dripping on my face. I looked up, and it was the three girls I kicked out of my party spitting on me. Fuck. It was fucking gross, and some of the spit even landed on my lips. Oh, no. I was so infuriated, but also too scared to say anything. I remember them spitting and cackling. Fast forward to college, or to after college times, my mom and I were getting blowouts one day, and her hairstylist <laughs> was one of the girls that spit on me. My mom and her made the connection that we went to the same high school, but I pretended I didn't know her. I wish I would have said something and made her feel really shitty for what she did. So fuck you to all those girls, and you suck. Thanks for doing the Lord's work, Greta. Love the pod, Marley. Whoa. It's getting spit on is no good. No, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's no bueno for me as well. That's bad. 
<laughs> I like. I mean, that's really not good. No, you got to kill him. Yeah, you got to go, go back. You got to go back, and you know where she works. Yeah, you don't have to kill all three. I just think. one. Make one an is example proof, yeah, out of proof one. Point. Honestly, you don't even need to kill. Just like hit with your car, yeah. Nick with your car. Get her real good yeah. with the car. Yeah. Damn, I'm sorry. That's really fucked that's up. That's fucking unacceptable. Yeah. Spit is disgusting. It is. I I remember, and maybe you remember this too. I don't know if you were a fan of the show Flavor of Love. I love Flavor of Love. Sure, of course, we all did. I I remember there was that episode where Pump Pumpkin yeah spit on New York. Oh, I remember that. And it was a big deal. And I think even then, it never fully occurred to me why she was spitting on new york yeah. also of all of the girls you could spit on like i would never spit on new york no, new york is is gonna kill you yeah uh, for real for real punk and wow she like her face is like fully in that blonde hair yeah, she had that short blonde that was hair. like really flat yeah. iron <laughs> it was not good it was not yeah. good yeah. she was very unattractive and very like uh, into Flavor Flav yeah. in a way that was disturbing to say the least. You know, what? Uh, whatever person uh, concocted Flavor of Love destroyed the planet. <laughs> yeah, is the source of all global all warming of our problems yeah. at this point. Yeah. Objectively, yeah. it's true. Like even it's really like the first like reality show in this iteration. Right? Yeah, and now. People getting spit on and kicked and all that stuff Crazy. is so normal to I us know. that we don't even see it as violent. Oh my like, god! Like Flavor of Love did that. Who, whatever producer did that, I your your it's soul flavor is gonna burn. It's Flavor Flav's fault. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's actually not his fault. I think it's he's a producer's a dumb dumb fault. That, yeah, yeah, just was like you. You mean I get to fuck all these yeah. girls? Oh my god! Like, Do you think he did fuck all of them? I think a hundred percent. Yeah. Would you fuck Flavor Flav? No. <laughs> 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 Ew, no. <laughs> no. And I'd fuck a lot of people, but yeah. no, not Flavor Flav. I would never fuck Flavor Flav. Not not under no circumstances. I would also fuck a lot of people. Yeah. I think that if Flavor Flav and I were the only two people left on earth and mm. we had to procreate for humanity, I would still say no. I would say no. I would say we actually should stop. Yeah. I would say if this is where we are, it this, all has to this end. This is all we have left? Yeah. Nothing good's gonna come no, out of the next batch. No, it has to end. <laughs> yeah, the new run ain't gonna be uh, nailing it. No, no, they're no, gonna no. make a bad thing. No, an they're gonna awful wear thing. clocks and yeah. be on crowns. No, no. Yeah, no. Bad. No. Yeah, don't fuck Flavor Flav. No. If anything, if anything, please don't, don't fuck, fuck Flavor Flav. Flav. Come on, guys. That's it. What are you thinking? Come on. Did you go to prom? I went to prom twice. <gasps> What'd you wear? I wore, <laughs> I wore a uh, a white tux with a custom pink vest uh love a custom piece yeah custom very pink very pink hot pink fuchsia it, it was n not unlike the head gum uh oh like a the middle not like the, a bubble gum pink yeah not the the but it love was like that. satiny and shiny mm. so had a little flair to it and then uh i wore that and i had i had braids at the time i had Long Omarion esque braids. Omarion was sexy. Talk about someone I would have fucked. B2K Omarion. was very in. Yes. Uh, all the women that I liked liked them at the time. Uh, they what was the most famous B2K song? Bum Bum Bump is oh, yeah. probably. Bum Bum Bump. Yeah. The, the, Baby, the, the, turn, turn around, around and, and let me see that sexy, sexy body, body go. Bum Bum Bum. bum, bum. bum. That's right. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, that was very in. So I had long braids. Uh, and and yeah, I wore a pink suit or a white suit with pink. And then the next year, I I uh, wore a white suit with black. Love. I picked black as the the satin or classic the with edgy with classic edgy. You yeah, know, yeah. I was like. I was like, huh, James Bond, I'll make it look tacky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that look you're doing and make it look fucking well, filthy. We were, in, we were in Illinois. We were outside Chicago. Listen, so a tacky, tacky town. You said that. Yeah. Um, and lastly, did you have a senior superlative? Uh, we didn't do senior superlatives uh, where I'm from. And we didn't 
have quotes either. It wasn't mm-hmm. like a thing we were allowed to do. Mm-hmm. Too many kids, I guess. If you could have picked a quote for yourself, what would it have been? I wish I would have picked something really funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wish I would have fucking like picked something really like interesting and yeah. funny. And I worry that I would have like chosen like a, an Elaine Locke quote or something you know what i mean i would have made it like something heavy heavy, about the the importance of of our manifesting our it's like shut up i mean that's that was young langston yeah it's gross it's still in you it should have been like if you smell what the rock is cooking and just let that be the thing yeah i would have done something gross and i i hate it no i love it it's good (laughs) oh langston is this? I can't believe this episode flew by. I can't even believe it. I'm lost in a. <laughs> I'm lost in a gorgeous conversation with Hollywood's most gorgeous oh, man alive. Stop it! Thank you for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. This was great. Where can all of my little listeners find you and see you and hear oh, yeah. you? Uh, I, I, you can follow me at Langston Kerman on all platforms. I, I'm on Twitter still, and mm-hmm. whew, that ain't going good. I was gonna say the uh, last one left. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got like a week in yep, me, and then I'm, yep. I'm bailing too. But follow me in that week and and also instagram obviously and and listen to my podcast it's called my mama told me i host it with david bory who's very funny very and funny we talk about uh black conspiracy theories i love that hell yeah um wow another amazing episode of my incredibly important hard-hitting podcast senior superlatives <laughs> where we really do the lord's work on this show thank you so much to everyone who writes in please continue writing us in at senior superlatives pod at gmail.com please give me five stars tell your friends to listen to this show for the love of christ love and of please christ. buy tickets to come and see me live i will be in washington dc mm. april 14th and 15th, going back to my hometown. Mm. Okay, please come to see me at, at, at DC Comedy Loft, I'm going to say, but that could be a lie. So okay. just, <laughs> if it isn't there, if it isn't there, it'll be okay. somewhere else. <laughs> you show up there, they'll tell you where to go. And that's about that. So you know what? <laughs> Until next week, stay cool, never change. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>